Hello, this is Miss Knight, and today I'm going to read you a book called My Penguin Osbert. It's a really cute book. It's by Elizabeth Cody Kimmel and il illustrated by H.B. Lewis, and it's about a boy who gets a pet penguin. All right, let's get started. Here's the first picture. It says, this year, I was very specific in my letter to Santa Claus. We've had a few misunderstandings in the past. For instance, last year, I asked for a fire engine red race car with a detachable roof, a lightning bolt on the side, and retracting headlights. And he did get me one. But it was only three inches long. And the year before, I had really wanted a trampoline. I wasn't sure how to spell it. So in my letter, I just sort of described what I wanted. So I got a pogo stick. A little different than a trampoline. This year, I was really, really careful. I wrote Santa a long letter and told him that I would like to have my own pet penguin. Not a stuffed penguin, but a real one from Antarctica. I told him my penguin should be one foot tall, white and black with a yellow beak, and his name should be Osbert. I included a drawing. I put extra postage on the envelope and sent it off a whole month early. Then I waited. When Christmas morning came, I was the first one downstairs. There he was. He was black and white with yellow beak and exactly 12 inches tall. He was moving and breathing and everything. Around his neck was a tag. It said, hello. My name is Osbert. Santa had come through. Could you imagine getting a penguin under your Christmas tree? I wanted Osbert to meet everybody. I wanted to take him to my room. Plus, I wanted to open my other presents. But Osbert really wanted to go outside and play. It was pretty cold and kind of windy too. There was a foot or two of snow on the ground and no sun. But I had asked for Osbert and now I had him. So we went outside. I think the boy's a little cold, huh? <laughs> we played powder slide and wrecked the igloo. We had snowball fights and made ice penguins. We escaped from the jaws of an imaginary leopard seal. Osbert wanted to go swimming, but I explained that it might not be possible. So we sang some of the old penguin songs instead. That night, I was ready to go straight to bed. We'd had such a big day, but Osbert wanted to take a bath. He filled the tub with to the very top and we got in. Osbert unwrapped all the bars of soap and floated them around like icebergs. After a while, I had pruned fingers and my skin itched from all the soap. But I had asked for Osbert and now I had him. And Osbert liked playing in a cold bath. He's being very nice to his pet and taking care of him, isn't he? The next morning, Mom said she'd make anything I wanted for breakfast. When I closed my eyes, I saw a stack of chocolate chip waffles with heated syrup, a platter piled high with sausage and icy pitcher of freshly squeezed mango juice. But Osbert doesn't like rich food and he doesn't like hot food and he doesn't like sweet food. 
Osbert wanted cold creamed herring with seaweed jam for breakfast. So that's what we had. I would hate to have to eat the same things as my pets, wouldn't you? After breakfast, it was my turn to do chores. So I did the dishes and went upstairs to clean my room. When I came back down, I saw that Osbert had been working too. He had built an entire village out of freezer pops, frozen leftovers, and tubs of ice cream. It was all beginning to melt. Osbert, of course, couldn't hold a towel in his flippers. But I had asked for Osbert, and now I had him. So, I cleaned up the mess myself. That afternoon, when Osbert was watching the Weather Channel on cable TV, I secretly wrote Santa another letter. Dear Santa, how are you and Mrs. Claus? We are fine. Thank you for the great penguin named Osbert. We take cold baths together and have cream herring for breakfast. I'm getting used to spending all day in the snow. Plus, it turns out I didn't have frostbite after all. Your friend, Joe. P.S. One more thing, Santa. If you feel like maybe I should have asked for a different present and you want to swap, that would be okay. And while Osbert was leaping through a snow globe catalog, I snuck out and mailed the letter. Why do you think he's asking about trading Osbert? Hmm. A couple of days later, I woke up to find a package at the foot of my bed. There was a tag with my name on it signed Santa. Inside the box was a red pullover sweater and two free passes to the grand opening of Antarctic World at the zoo. After Osbert made a shrimp sculpture, sculpture out of the wrapping paper, he, was, he wanted to go right away, but he didn't want to take the bus. The zoo was a long way away. But I had asked for Osbert, and now I had him. So we walked. When we got to Antarctic World, Osbert headed straight for the Penguin Palace. There was a huge snowy hill with an ice slide leading down to a big pool. There were leopard seals painted on the walls. Tiny bergs of real ice were floating in the water. And then a door opened in the wall, and a guy came out and started tossing creamed herring to all the penguins. See all those penguins? When it got to be closing time, I told Osbert we had to leave. He waddled over to me, but I knew he felt at home in the penguin palace. It had everything he needed. Osbert was the first Christmas present Santa ever gave me that I really, really wanted. I had asked for Osbert, and I had gotten him. But Osbert needed ice slides and leopard seals and plenty of herring. I asked him if he would be happier living at the Penguin Palace. Osbert looked into my eyes, and then he nodded. Show you that picture. It's a little lonely at home without Osbert. At my, and I'm sorry, and my new sweater itches my neck a little bit, right under the chin. But it's nice to be warm, and I had chocolate chip waffles for breakfast. Next Saturday is Kids Visit Free Day at Antarctic World. I don't have bus fare. But I can walk. I'll wear my red sweater so Osbert will be sure to recognize me. 
and next Christmas is only 11 months away. I've thought about it a lot, and I already know what I want. I wonder what he's going to ask for. I'm sure I can't get into too much trouble with just one helicopter. <laughs> the end. That was such a cute book. And look how well he took care of Osbert. Even though he didn't want to eat the herring or play outside in the cold, he knew that Osbert needed that. And he was willing to sacrifice for his pet because he loved him. Even though he gave him up, he still loved him very much. You can tell because of all the things he did and that he goes to visit him. Do you have to give up anything for your pets? Someone else in your family? I bet you do, and I bet you do it because you love them. All right, bye-bye.